CATL is the global market leader in high voltage electric vehicle batteries. And before we go any further, I've always called them CATL. Others say cattle. Watching the press conference, the interpreter said cattle. So I'm going to try to do the same. Their batteries have gone into over 18 million vehicles in 66 countries. They're planning a separate stock listing on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that could raise five billion in funding to feed their ambitions. And prior to the Shanghai Auto Show, which will undoubtedly include many cool new vehicles using their advanced batteries. In this video, let's look at the market leader in EV battery to see what they have in store to charge the transition to electric mobility. Here's a little overview to help keep things straight. It helps me to remember. Shenzhen is the name for their lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Less energy dense, but Chinese automakers have proven that they're good enough for everyday use. Chin Lin is more expensive, more energy dense NMC battery chemistry. And the new Freevoy super hybrid battery is specifically designed for plug-in hybrids and e-revs that are growing in popularity even faster than battery electrics. And later, I'll attempt to pronounce that name for their sodium ion battery that will go into production later this year. These are their passenger vehicle batteries, but they also support huge commercial vehicles, grid storage, recycling, and battery swapping. But for this video, let's focus on their passenger vehicle batteries. In 2023, they launched their super fast charging Shenzhen battery. By the end of 2024, it was used by 16 automakers in 39 models. It will be in 67 models by the end of this year, capable of 4C charging, which means it can recharge four times in one hour or every 15 minutes under ideal conditions. Another way Cattle likes to explain this is to say that can add 400 kilometers or about 250 miles of range in 10 minutes. Now, range depends on how efficient the electric vehicle itself is. So this complicates the metric. Plus that range number is using the CLTC test, which is very generous, about 35% higher than what you would expect for EPA test. But Cattle uses it in all their press releases. So, you know, they're the experts. They announced their Shenzhen Plus battery last year at the auto show, and they claim this LFP battery achieves 205 watt hours per kilogram of energy density, so getting close to NMC levels of power. And it can add 600 kilometers of range in 10 minutes, faster than before. But today they announced their Shenzhen Gen 2 battery, up to 12C charging, that's 12 times in one hour or every five minutes, 520 kilometers added in five minutes, zero to 80% in 15 minutes, and that's in cold weather. To achieve faster charging, they improved the graphite deposited on the copper anode foil and improved the liquid electrolyte. These are not yet semi-solid or solid state batteries, and yet they keep squeezing more performance out of each generation of the existing technology. There are improvements to reduce heat buildup, that happens when you charge them quickly. All this adds up to a claimed peak charging of 1.3 megawatts. If you've been to my channel before, hey, thanks for coming back. I thought I scared you away, but seriously, I like to geek out on BYD, and they recently unveiled their Super E platform, which has an improved version of their BYD LFP blade batteries and peak charging of one megawatt or a thousand kilowatts. You know, like many EVs in America tap out at 150 kilowatts or less, the latest battery electric in China, they're going to a thousand and now 1300 kilowatts. As we saw from BYD, that peak does not last the entire charge curve. Cattle claims they can add 75 kilometers or 47 miles in just 30 seconds. That's a little bit better than BYD's claim of 20 kilometers in 10 seconds. Cattle says it's 12C battery. BYD claims 10C. Remember, these are the cheaper LFP batteries that Western automakers took a pass on. And now we're slowly realizing that LFP chemistry 
may make a lot of sense in many applications. 520 kilometers added in five minutes. You can see how the leader just keeps getting better. BYD had this title for about a month, but no more. They showed a demo using an Exceed Stera ES, which switched from BYD to cattle batteries in a recent refresh. They're pushing 1400 amps through one cable. Now, this is where it raises my eyebrow a little bit. Even liquid cooled cables will struggle to keep that going for a very long time. 1279 kilowatts is the highest number I saw, so that's a little over 900 volts for the system. When it goes over 20% state of charge, it does drop off, but still over a thousand kilowatts. It dips below one megawatt after 30% SOC, over 650 kilowatts at 50% state of charge. There's not a detailed timestamps to do an accurate charge curve, but it does appear to be much flatter and more impressive than what BYD showed earlier on their Han L. So 520 kilometers added in five minutes is better than what BYD showed for a similar sized EV. These tests are run under ideal temperature conditions though. But at minus 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, they claim five to 80% charging in just 15 minutes. And they demonstrated that on an Avatar EV. Cattle has talked about their self-heating battery technology, which sounds a lot like the pulse width modulation that BYD is now offering, but I can't confirm that for sure. One obvious difference between cattle and BYD is that cattle doesn't make their own EVs or build out their own charging network. So they'll need to test with many partners to ensure compatibility with the high powered megawatt chargers being built out by all of these companies. LFP batteries use less rare minerals than NMC, but they still require lithium, which is scaling up production to meet demand, but it's not something that you would call abundant. Something that is abundant is sodium. It's over 400 times more abundant than lithium. This means not only cheaper, but also lower emissions in the manufacturing of the battery. Up to 60% less greenhouse gases are produced when making a sodium ion battery over a lithium ion. And Cattle now says they're ready for mass adoption. The key achievements were an improvement in energy density, reducing strain within the battery during the charge and discharge of them, and extending the life cycle of the battery to be dependable over thousands of charges and discharges. Another area that needed to be solved was their low temperature performance. Sodium ions face internal resistance to their movement in cold weather. At high temperatures, 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit, they managed to retain acceptable battery performance there too. After the really smart scientists created their breakthrough technologies, they then handed it over to the marketing department who came up with the name Nextra, that's how I heard them pronounce it. This game changer battery has an energy density of 175 watt hours per kilogram. So that's less than the premium NMC batteries and only a little less than their own excellent LFP batteries, but at a cost that's even less. Like other cattle batteries, it's a prismatic format, not cylindrical or pouch or the long blade style that BYD uses. So what did they do with this amazing low cost sustainable battery? They went medieval on it to prove just how safe it is. They crushed it in all directions, nothing. They penetrated it, it passed the nail test. I don't even think there is a drill test, but they did one anyway. Oh, come on, now they're just showing off cutting it in half. In the CGI video, they showed the Nextra sodium ion batteries being used at the high voltage battery in commercial trucks, in cars, and as an auxiliary battery, and as a starter motor battery, a wide set of applications. The first production application won't be all that exciting. It's a 24 volt starter motor battery for commercial diesel trucks. This four and a half kilowatt hour sodium ion battery gets used to power the air conditioning also for the driver. It replaces the much heavier lead acid battery. They showed cold weather performance that could be better than a lead acid battery. It starts a semi and yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what he's cooking, but it kind of makes me hungry. 
It can provide up to eight years of life or more, longer than a traditional lead acid battery and at a 61% lower operating cost. Production of this 24 volt commercial battery starts in June, but you didn't click on this video to hear about low voltage batteries. In a vehicle with a 2.95 meter wheelbase, that's longer, a bit longer than the BYD Seal, but shorter than the Han L, for example, Cattle Nextra batteries can provide over 300 miles or 500 kilometers of electric only range. And in a plug-in hybrid, they can provide 125 miles or about 200 kilometers of electric range. To prove that they've solved the low temperature performance of sodium ion batteries, they took a Neta S retrofitted with sodium ion batteries down to minus 30 degrees Celsius or minus 22 Fahrenheit. It started off slow, charging under 50 kilowatts, then got over 100 kilowatts once it passed 60% state of charge and nearly touching 200 kilowatts as it went up to 80%. 30 to 80% charging took 30 minutes at extremely cold temperatures. And if you get up to normal temperatures, it only takes 10 minutes. Cattle Nextra batteries charge at 5C levels. Discharging in the cold can also be a problem for sodium ion, but they showed great power output at those same cold temperatures, and 93% of the battery capacity was available to use in the cold. As someone who lives in a northern climate, that's a really impressive number, as cold weather can reduce the normal range of an EV by like 25% easily. Even when the battery gets down to a 10% state of charge, it was able to deliver acceptable cold weather performance. And they claim that it can last up to 10,000 cycles, which equates well longer than the normal life of a passenger vehicle use. So what year should we expect these experimental batteries from cattle? December, December of this year. Yeah, cattle itself believes that sodium ion batteries have the potential to displace half of the current LFP market. They're not perfect. Cattle Nextra batteries have a lower energy density than their own LFP batteries, so that equals a little more weight or a little less range. For something like an eVTOL or a flying car, it wouldn't make sense. And the cycle lives they claim were probably achieved in a lab. Real world testing over many years may expose some limitations to those results. Their NMC Chemistry Chi Lin batteries are not waiting for the competition to catch up. Most notably, they explained how improvements to their nanotechnology, the negative electrode, will benefit all the batteries in terms of volumetric energy density. So not the energy per kilogram, but the energy per liter of space that the battery takes up. You can see that NMC Chemistry has energy density advantages for its high performance applications, it may still be the right choice for some vehicles. And their Freevoy batteries announced just last year are optimized for plug-in hybrid and e-rev applications. A new dual core design will utilize two banks of batteries with different chemistries. Basically, one chemistry provides the power and takes in energy recuperated through regen, while the other chemistry recharges that drive battery, providing a steady flow of energy on longer drives. This is the same concept that our next energy or one has been working on with their Gemini battery pack, not identical chemistries that cattle is using, but the main difference is that cattle does business in a country that is hell bent on dominating the battery industry. While here in America, we flip flop between our government loving and hating electric vehicles. One is having a hard time ramping up amid all the turmoil and uncertainty. Back to cattle, one combination of chemistries offered uses LFP Shenzhen batteries to drive the electric motors and sodium ion Naxtra batteries as the range extending stable battery or combine Qilin batteries with their NMC chemistries and LFP Shenzhen batteries, and you get more range, faster charging, albeit at a higher price. I, I think it's time to wrap it up. This has been a long video. Cattle now has three lines of battery chemistry to offer, plus a dual core pack that can be customized based on the automaker's requirements and budget. 
Sodium ion batteries were expected to be a game changer in the upcoming years. <laughs> well, it only took a couple of months. Expect some of Cattle's favorite customers to start announcing their new EVs will utilize these new batteries in the upcoming months or in the next 24 hours as the auto show in Shanghai kicks off. And I didn't even touch on Cattle's recent efforts to build out battery swapping in partnership with NEO, not in competition with each other. What will that look like? Well, hit that subscribe button to stay informed. Now, back to my neck of the woods, Ford continues construction on a battery plant in Marshall, Michigan, despite protests from some locals who don't like the idea of licensing an LFP battery design from a Chinese company. And rumors circulated that GM wanted TDK to do the same thing and build a plant in the US, but no official announcement on that. If you ask me, American companies would be smart to learn how to make LFP batteries from the largest EV battery maker in the world. After all, China learned how to make some pretty damn good cars from joint ventures with Western automakers. Look at them now. Thanks for watching.